Hello, my name is Matt Barth. I'm a professor in electrical and computer engineering here at the University of California, Riverside. Today, as part of uh, the Bending the Curve curriculum, we're going to be talking about energy and emissions implications of transportation. So we're going to go through five different modules today, and there's three primary learning objectives that we want to go over. First, we want you to understand the relationship between traffic, energy, and emissions, and then start to think about solutions. For example, how can we use intelligent transportation system techniques to reduce energy and emissions for our future transportation needs? And then lastly, there's a lot of um, interest and efforts going on now in automated vehicles. So we're going to talk a little bit about the safety, mobility, and the energy effects that are, are related to uh, vehicle automation. So we have five different modules. Uh, we're going to first talk in module one about the major concerns of transportation, talk about safety, mobility, things like that. And then uh, module two, we're going to start to look more specifically at the energy and emission impacts of transportation. And then we're going to talk about solutions. We'll go through different ways we can solve these from a sustainable transportation point of view. And then we're going to zero in a little bit more and talk about intelligent transportation system techniques. And then we finish up with, again, talking about vehicle automation and its potential role in the future. So let's start first with talking about our major concerns with transportation. We typically think of several things when we look at transportation. Obviously, we, the first and foremost is we want our transportation systems to be safe. That's the paramount thing. We want uh, people that travel in cars, trains, buses, planes. Safety is always number one. Uh, and so that's always at the top of the list. But we also think about things like how efficiently we can get from point A to point B. We often talk about throughput through our traffic network system. And we generally refer to that as mobility. So we'll talk a little bit more about mobility in just a moment. Um, economics comes into play. I mean, we want to uh, pay a certain amount for getting from one point to another point. So uh, pricing is an important aspect to this. And then lastly, uh, when we look at greenhouse gases, energy needs, and also criteria pollutant uh, emissions, that's another very important aspect of transportation. And then we talk about this across many different transportation modes. Uh, when we talk about moving people, we talk about walking, we talk about you know, low speed vehicles, scooters, carts, things like that. Bicycles is certainly one way that we get around. But here in the US, you know, one of the most predominant ways of, of getting around, of course, is the car, right? And so we focus a lot on uh, different types of cars and how they operate within our traffic network system. But there's also buses, uh, part of the public transportation, trains, uh, ships, and airplanes, too. Um, we also move goods in addition to, to people. And, and generally, the modes are similar, where we can deliver goods by you know, hand delivering, by walking, again, low speed, cars. But again, when we think of goods movement, we often think of trucks. And we'll talk more about trucks and, and things like that. But of course, there's trains and other modes that we, uh, that we want to consider. So let's first start talk about safety. As I mentioned before, safety is top of the list. Um, so we drive a tremendous amount of miles every single day here in the United States. And if you add it all up over a year, unfortunately there's about 33,000 deaths per year uh, here in the United States on our roads. That's steadily been coming down over the years, mainly due to better vehicle safety, better system management, things like that. But still, 33,000 people that die on our roads every year is pretty significant. We can still do better, and we're going to talk about how we can potentially do that. Uh, but it's important to understand that you know, we drive a tremendous amount. There's hundreds of millions of miles traveled every single day, and that's something that we uh, need to take into consideration. Uh, mobility. Uh, mobility is an important aspect to our lives. Uh, when we design our road systems and our cities and things like that, you know, uh, having transportation is a key part. Again, getting from your home to work to school, uh, between all these different locations, that's critical to how our society functions. And so really, the vehicle and the transportation plays an essential element of our lives. But then if we look at our transportation infrastructure, we can often look at it as a resource management problem. If we look at our roadway network, we're talking about you know, number of lanes, how many miles of, of highways do we have, roadways, and that's a resource. Um, then at the same time, we use our vehicles to travel on that way, roadway network, and we have a certain amount of demand. So what this boils down to is a, uh, a resource and a demand problem that we have to solve. 
the biggest thing with mobility is congestion, right? So if we had plenty of capacity and not so much demand, then our roadways flow. We have plenty of uh, access to get to different places where we want to be. But of course, if we have more demand than the capacity of the actual roadways, then we get roadway congestion. Roadway congestion has been studied now for quite a bit of time. And if you look uh, at the different studies that have been going around, um, it seems like roadway congestion continues to get worse, even though we are expanding our system to some degree and making improvements in terms of how the traffic operates on those roads. Um, there are certain websites you can go to to see the different statistics, uh, but in general, congestion seems to be growing everywhere in different city sizes. Um, it's happening that during longer periods of the day, and if you look at congestion, you know, there's a lot associated with that in terms of wasted fuel um, and, and, of course, the cost, too, in terms of time and, and money. So if you look at mobility, how do we manage this? Well, we can manage our supply. The obvious thing is, well, we can continue to build our roads, expand the number of lanes, uh, maybe add more infrastructure for alternative modes, things like uh, light rail, different things like that. Um, but maybe one thing that we can do better is have better uh, system operation and managing those system operations. When I talk about system operations, I'm talking about things like traffic lights, ramp meters, and uh, responding to different traffic accidents. Those are things that we can really improve on. Uh, and then as part of that, what goes hand in hand are what we call intelligent transportation system techniques. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in a future module. The other way to, to deal with this, or in, in tandem, is to manage the demand, right? So in, in addition to maximizing the supply, we want to potentially manage the demand. And that's happening already with uh, maybe different pricing mechanisms. We're seeing more and more of these toll roads. But again, that's one key way of dealing with the demand on our roads uh, themselves. Uh, we can provide other incentives for alternative modes. Um, but there's other mechanisms, too, about uh, companies providing incentives to their employees to maybe do some telecommuting, working at home, uh, and then just coming in once in a while. So there are different mechanisms in terms of how we manage our demand. Um, then, of course, land use is a more of a long-term solution. That's generally the problem of uh, keeping uh, employment close to uh, residential areas so that the travel between the different locations isn't so great. Um, you know, with a typical urban sprawl, we have developments of housing and work that tend to get further and further separated, and that's part of the problem. So I think for future, we definitely need to manage our land use and, and do a, a better job of, of planning in terms of uh, how we develop our cities.